Hey, Wasp's happening, guys. This is Noel with CreationEffects.com, and I have been busy as a bee with a new After Effects template. It's called Swarms, and it lets you create realistic animations of flying bugs, which uh, you can then add to your shots or motion graphics. With this effect, you can animate a single 3D insect or create a 3D swarm with virtually unlimited numbers, and you have complete control over where they fly and their swarming behavior. You can even fold up an insect's wings and have them land and it comes with 18 different species as well as some insect audio effects and uh, the project file for the demo video. So all of these shots that you're seeing now, you can dissect those comps to see how I did it. Now I've had ants in my pants for months now because I've been really anxious to complete this series uh, because flocks and schools, those are already out and selling like grubs on a stick. And now swarms is the final piece. So go see what all the buzz is about there at uh, creationeffects.com. You can get them separately or get the bundle at a discount. I know you'll like them. They're the bee's knees. All right, so let me get started with the tutorial. I'm so excited to show you. I almost centipede my pants. Um, by the way, you're going to get a lot more bad bug puns in this video, uh, whether you like it or not, because I've been working on this template, oh, a little over three months now, and two of those months were spent coming up with bug jokes. So you've been warned. Uh, hopefully it doesn't bug you too much. All right, so I'm going to fly through this because there's a lot to cover. First of all, I'll talk about how the insects and swarms are built and the difference between the 2D comps and the 3D comps. Then I'll show how to add insects to your swarms, then how to make the swarm fly where you want. Then we'll look at all the uh, customization controls so that you can change the flight behavior. Then I'll share a number of miscellaneous tips that could be very helpful to you. And I'll end by explaining a few things about the fireflies. And perhaps you'd also like to know how I made this shot. Flies on the dead cowboy. Well, it's none of your beeswax. Relax, I'm just pollen your leg. Of course I'll show you how I made that. But it's going to be a different tutorial. So if you want to know how to uh, composite the swarms onto your footage and how to make the insects land, uh, which is not as obvious as you would think, just go to the swarms webpage and you'll find a link to that second tutorial. All right, so to get started, be sure to open the zip file the right way by right-clicking it and choosing the Extract All option, and that'll prevent errors in After Effects. Uh, that's just for PC users. If you're on a Mac, you just double-click it. And then you can open the folder, and you'll see a couple project files. The project file for the demo video is here if you want to look at that. Otherwise, open the Swarms file, and uh, you'll need to convert it to your current version of After Effects. That's normal. Also, a warning for all of you using an older version of After Effects. Uh, if you're using CS5 or CS6, you'll notice that all of the customization controls have this label on them that says missing. And don't worry about that. Everything will work just fine. Uh, you will actually run into some bigger problems when you start adding insects to your swarms, and I'll get to that later. If you already have a project uh, you're working on in After Effects and you want to import the swarms effect into your project, you can go to File, and then Import, then File, and then choose the project file, and that will put the entire project into a neat little folder in your project panel. So you can see we have some instructions here for getting started. We don't need that. Uh, you'll want your Effect Controls panel available, so if you don't see it, go to Window and Effect Controls. Make sure it's really big so you can read the long names of the controls. You can see our project panel here is just crawling with different species, 18 to be exact. Let's see, there are fireflies. That was a bright idea. Uh, mosquitoes. I've been really itching to show you that one. Um, there's the mayfly. That one's cool. It may fly, it may not. I don't really know. And uh, then there's this grasshopper, which, oops, that one's out of locus. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, if you've already played with the Flox template, this is going to be very familiar to you. Uh, the bugs work almost exactly like the birds do. So let me show you. Uh, I'll just open one of these. So hmm, to be or not to be? Yeah, to be, I think. And uh, in here, you can see we have a 2D comp and a 3D comp for our bees. Let's look at the 2D comp first. I'll play it back. You can see we have a hive of activity here. Uh, this one is lower quality, which means it's faster. So you'll want to use this comp if you have a lot of bugs in your swarm, like maybe 300 or more, 
or if your bugs are going to be really small, uh, then it's fine to use this comp too, and you'll get a faster render. Each bug in this comp is a single layer, and these are actually all pre-comp layers, so you can double click and it'll open the pre-comp, and inside we can see it's just a looping video of the insect flying in place. So you can visualize it now maybe. We have a bunch of these 2D movies all flying around together in three dimensions, which means that when they fly towards the camera, uh, they're going to almost disappear because they're flat. That's why it's best to use this comp uh, for bugs that are in the background or are really small. Now, if you don't like this angle of the insect in the movie, or you don't like the lighting or the way it's flapping its wings, there is a easy way to make your own looping video. If you open this 2db folder inside the pre-comps folder, you'll see a comp named export new movie, where you can customize your insect and then export your own looping movie to replace a default movie. Just be sure to read this instructions comp uh, because there are several important steps that you'll have to take. Let's open the 3D comp now. Hive already set it so our B is big and centered so you can see him clearly. So this B is 3D. Uh, it's made up of four segments. So that's two images for the body and two images for the wings. And you can see down here in the layer names, each B is four layers. So here's B2 and here's B3. Four layers is typical, but a few of the insects in this template are beetles, and they have an extra two layers to them, uh, which make up the wing casings. As you probably figured out, these aren't fully formed models like you, like you would get from a uh, 3D modeling program. And maybe you're even thinking, that doesn't look real, that's never going to fly. Well, A, bah humbug to you too, and B, false. The bugs will look really good if they're moving fast like bugs do, or if you keep them relatively small. And especially if you have the motion blur on, you'll be surprised at how real they look. And if they don't, well, you can file a bug report. So let's take a look at these four layers that make up an insect. I'll change this to source name, and you can see what each layer is. We've got a body top and bottom image, and a body profile image, and then two wings. Uh, these pre-comps can all be found in the 3db folder in here, along with the images used for the insect. I'll go back to the layer names and you can see these segments are all numbered, one through four. All the segments of each bug have to stay together and they have to stay in order, uh, which is important when you're adding insects to the swarm. So let's talk about adding insects. Uh, these yellow layers at the top make up the leader insect, and then all the blue layers under it are the follower insects. The follower insects all follow the leader insect uh, with some random movement mixed in there. If you just want a single insect in your animation, you can delete or hide all the follower insects. Or if you want to add insects to the swarm, you can duplicate the follower insects as many times as you want. Now there is a correct way to do this uh, so you don't stir up a hornet's nest of expression errors. So watch closely. I'll scroll to the bottom and I'll select the segment one layer of that last insect and then shift select the segment four layer, and then copy them, that's control C or command C, then select the sky layer at the bottom and paste them, that's control V or command V. You have to select segment one first because that'll preserve their order when you paste them. Now, if you want hundreds of bugs, you can speed things up by selecting multiple bugs at once. So I would start by selecting a segment one layer up here, and then shift select the last segment four layer, copy all of them, select the last layer, and paste. When you do it that way, uh, the B numbers aren't going to be in order anymore, which might tick you off a bit, but it's okay. It'll still work fine. If I go back to the 2D comp, it's the same idea, but it's even simpler because there's just one layer per insect. Just select as many layers as you want, and you can just copy and paste them to the bottom. Uh, a quick warning to any of you that are using After Effects CS5, uh, when you copy and paste an insect, you're going to get expression errors. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. Uh, so when that happens, you just click OK and keep copying and pasting your insects. And when you have all the insects you want in your swarm, you'll need to turn all of those broken expressions back on manually. So to do that, you would select all of your layers, right click, and choose Reveal Expression Errors 
and you're going to see a, a ton of expressions then, which are these lines of code. And you'll just have to go down and turn them all back on by clicking this little icon here that looks like an equal sign. Okay, let's go over how to make these insects fly where you want. Like I said, the follower insects all follow the leader insect. So everything the leader does, where it goes, how it tilts, how and when it flaps its wings, the followers copy it, uh, but on a delay and with their own random behavior mixed in. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but to make the whole swarm fly in a certain direction, you just need to animate the leader insect and the followers will follow. So to do that, we'll just uh, keyframe the position property of this first layer of the first insect. So if I select it and hit the P key, it opens up the position property. And you can see there aren't any keyframes on here yet. So the swarm is actually staying in one place. Um, but the bugs are really spread out and all this movement we're seeing is just the individual bugs flying their own random path. So you can add a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch icon here and then go forward in time and change the swarm's position. And that adds another keyframe. So now the whole swarm will follow that motion path. And if you want, you can grab the pen tool and click on the path and put a curve in there. And since we're working in three dimensions, you'll want to look at the motion path from different angles. So I'll switch the view to top view. And now we're looking down at our scene. See, here's our camera layer here, uh, pointed toward the insects. Here's our sun layer to the right, shining light on our scene. And with our selection tool, I can move these keyframes around. So now I'm moving this keyframe back away from the camera. So that's just a really quick lesson in moving 3D layers around in After Effects. Uh, let's talk about the control layer now. This layer is just infested with tons of organized controls, and these are how you're going to customize the look of the insects and their flight behavior. If you understand these, you'll be able to do some really advanced customizations. Uh, each species in this template has the same controls pretty much, um, but they're each set at their own different preset values because bees don't fly like fireflies, which don't fly like butterflies or ladybugs or wasps, etc., etc. I'm going to go over all the stuff you need to know right now, but I've also included a PDF in your zip file called Customization Guide, which gives a more detailed description of each control. So you can always reference that if you need to. The first section are the general controls. Uh, this random seed will give new random positions, flight paths, and wing flapping patterns to the insect. So if you've previewed your swarm and you're not quite happy with how it turned out, just change this to any random number and you'll get new random results. Uh, the next one is position delay and followers. This is in milliseconds. So if this is set to 100, then B2 will copy B1's flight path one tenth of a second after B1. That's just simple math. And then B3 will follow one tenth of a second after B2 and so on. So basically, if you set this really low, you'll get a tightly packed, more synchronized swarm. If you set it really high, you would get a long, spread out trail of insects. Next is wing flap delay in followers. Same concept here, uh, but this is the amount of delay the followers use when mimicking the leader's wing flapping motions. So turning this down to zero would actually give you a swarm with insects that all flap their wings at the exact same time. Uh, this control is probably more useful for swarms that are landed and you've animated the wings to fold up and then occasionally flutter. Uh, last in this section is enable wiggle one and two in leader. I'll have to come back to that one in a moment. So then we have insect appearance. Uh, the most important thing here is the scale to make your insects bigger or smaller. Each insect is a little different, but generally if this is set to 100%, the insects will be about 1000 pixels long. So plenty of resolution to work with there. Uh, usually you'll have it set to something like 5% or less. And then there's scale variations, so your insects are not all exactly the same size. Uh, keep this one less than your scale amount. Body turn is one you won't need to touch if your insects are really small. But if your bugs are more prominent or visible, uh, you would use this control to give your insects a realistic tilt as they turn. So after you've created a motion path for your leader bug, you would keyframe this control to make the bug tilt left when it turns left and tilt right when it turns right. 
and then the followers will automatically make those same tilts and turns. Body angle will point the bug upward or downward. Um, you may have noticed that the insects automatically point in the direction that they're moving because auto orient is turned on for each parent layer. But uh, if you look at slow motion footage of insects flying, they don't really point their bodies straight at the direction that they're moving. They typically fly at an angle with their butts kind of hanging down. So if you want to add some tilt to your bugs, it's okay to do that. So next I built in this preview mode switch uh, that will let you see your insects better for if you wanted to make any customizations to how they look. When I turn it on, you can see it puts the bug right in front of the camera and then you can rotate it to preview from different angles. Uh, then if you want, you can adjust things like the scale and position of the wings. Um, and th these controls will already be set to where I think they look best, but feel free to change it. When you're done customizing, just turn off preview mode and the insect will go back to its normal position. Snug as a bug in a rug. The next section is wing flapping. All of these are set to where they're supposed to be, so I don't really need to go over these. But uh, if you are interested in customizing the wing flapping, you could watch the tutorial for the Flox template uh, because I go over these controls in detail in that video. And especially if you're going to be using any of the butterflies, uh, you may want to know how these work because these will let you set the amount of time the butterflies flap their wings versus how much time they spend gliding. I will tell you real quick about these last few controls, which are the manual wing flapping controls. By default, uh, this is turned off and the insect's wings will just flap continuously and automatically. But there may be times uh, when you want to stop that, like if you decide to make an insect land. So you could just keyframe this checkbox to turn on when the insect lands, and that will enable manual control. So then you can have the wings uh, be spread out and motionless, or you can keyframe them to flap in a controlled manner using this amount control. Or if the bug has landed, uh, you may want to keyframe this last control to go from zero to 100, which closes or folds back the wings in a way that's realistic for an insect that has landed. Next we have the spread controls. These let you determine the general shape of your swarm so you can spread the bugs out randomly in any direction, X, Y, or Z. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's move on to the wiggle controls down here. To make your swarm look realistic, you have to add some random motion to the insects, in addition to the keyframed motion that you add to the leader bug. And that's where the wiggle comes in. We're all familiar with wiggle. We've seen things wiggle. Heck, back in my day, I could wiggle like a champ. But now you're going to learn a new type of wiggle an expression that is essential to this effect. Uh, if you're starting to feel the butterflies in your stomach, don't worry, it's really easy and you won't even have to write any expressions. Uh, you can see we actually have four types or levels of wiggle that we can apply to our insects, which uh, gives you a lot of control so you can imitate every kind of swarming behavior. I set up this quick example to show you uh, what multiple levels of wiggle can do. So I've got this circle shape and I'm going to add a simple wiggle expression to its position. So I'll type the P key to bring up the position property and I'll alt click the stopwatch icon to open an, an expression box. And in there I'll type wiggle to 700. So it's going to randomly wiggle a distance of 700 pixels at a speed of two times per second. I can slow it down if I use a decimal speed, like 0.5. Now I'll add another level of wiggle by adding a second expression to the anchor point value, which can also affect the circle's position. This time I'll say wiggle three times per second, wiggle just 100 pixels. So now if I play it back, we can see it has a large, slower motion of the first wiggle expression, and it added the small, faster wiggle of the second expression. And that's the wiggle expression. See, that's not hard. It's as easy as one, two, flea. All right, I've set my wiggle controls to zero. There's no keyframed motion path and no delay yet. It's just a bunch of bugs on top of each other in the middle of the screen. I'll add a basic motion path to the swarm to have them fly across the screen. 
Next, I'll add some random swarm wiggle. Uh, these two wiggles that say swarm movement affect the leader insect, which then affects the entire swarm. And uh, you can see we have a main wiggle for larger movements and a minor wiggle for smaller movements, just like our example earlier. Um, I'll leave our minor movement at zero, and I'll just add a large wiggle of 1,000 pixels in each direction at a speed of one time per second. And our swarm is actually moving backward a little bit, which I don't want. So I'll turn down the horizontal wiggle to something like 300 and maybe increase the vertical to 2000 pixels. And let's have a look. So you could say these are boring insects uh, because they're all occupying the same space. They're not doing anything special. So I'll turn up the position delay to 100. And now each bug is 100 milliseconds behind the bug in front of it. The bugs will each need their own random movement, and that's what these wiggle one and wiggle two controls are for. You can see they say main individual's movement and minor individual's movement. So these don't affect the leader bug, they just affect the followers. Let's add 1000 pixels in each direction at a speed of 0 0.5 times per second. And lastly, I'll add a minor wiggle to our individuals. I'll set it at 150 pixels at a quicker speed, like two times per second. You'll probably notice that for the default settings of all the swarms, I've got the position delay set to a negative value. And let me show you why. If I move the beginning position to somewhere in the frame, and I'll, I'll play that back, so we can see that all these bugs are just hanging out here doing nothing uh, until it's their turn to follow the leader. And that's because before that first keyframe, there's no motion. So what you can do is set the delay to a negative value and that moves the follower insects to the front uh, because they're looking forward in time to see what the leader does and then doing it. Now, if your swarm is staying in one place and you're only using wiggle motion and not position keyframes, then it doesn't matter. You can use a negative or positive value. Now I said earlier I would go back and explain this checkbox here, enable wiggle one and two in leader. Wiggle one and two is the one applied to the individuals, remember, and by default it doesn't affect the leader. But if you want, you can flip this switch and it will be applied to the leader, which then adds all that extra wiggle to the followers in addition to their normal individual wiggle. It's a quick way to speed up the bug's motion and it might be worth a preview to see if you like the results. There were times when I thought I had created a realistic flight from my swarm, and then I decided to flip the switch and I washed it and was like, nope, that's now it's realistic. Um, I think bugs move much faster in real life than we animators tend to think. Anyway, one last note about this. Uh, if this is not on and you're just using wiggle one and two on your swarm and not wiggle three and four, or maybe if you have wiggle three and four turned down really low, um, then your leader bug is going to be just chilling in the center of your swarm and not moving. So if you see a distracting bug that's barely moving, that's probably the leader bug and you can just hide those layers. I want to share a few tips now that might help your workflow or improve your animations. First of all, there's a few features in the After Effects timeline that you may or may not be familiar with, but they can help a lot when customizing your swarms. First of all, the shy switch here. Uh, will hide all of your follower insects. It won't hide the insects in your animation, it'll just hide the layers down here, which is nice if you have a thousand layers and you want to be able to uh, see your background layers all the way at the bottom. Second, this motion blur switch is off by default so, so that your swarms will preview faster. In most cases, you're going to want to turn it on before you do your final render uh, because it'll make the insects look more realistic. Also, it fixes a wing problem because um, with the insects that have lower wing flap speeds, their motion tends to sync with the frame rate and then the wings just look like they're motionless or flapping really slowly. So motion blur fixes that. Uh, you can adjust the amount of motion blur by opening the composition settings, clicking advanced and increasing or decreasing the shutter angle. And you can improve the quality by increasing the samples here. Finally, the solo switch is one most of you are probably familiar with. 
It comes in handy if you have a lot of insects that you want to temporarily exterminate. So uh, you can do a quick preview. You could, you could just isolate several of your bugs and then it won't have to process the entire swarm. <laughs> One cool feature is that every insect in your swarm can be independently moved or animated. And this is helpful for creating stray insects. So if you have a tightly packed swarm, not every single one is right there in the middle of the swarm. All you do is select the first segment of any insect and you can adjust or keyframe its position property to move it where you want. There are ways to create a super huge swarms that have tens of thousands of insects. It involves rendering out smaller swarms with an alpha channel and then importing that clip back into After Effects and duplicating it a bunch of times. Take a look at the uh, Flox tutorial where it talks about making starling murmurations uh, if you'd like to see how that's done. It's very possible that you'll want more than one species in your animation. And uh, if you were to just copy and paste all the layers from one swarms comp to another swarms comp, it wouldn't work because the control layer that you copy over will automatically be renamed to control layer two. And the insects you copy over won't realize that and they'll, they'll be looking for the layer named control layer, uh, which is the one that we already had in there and it'll screw everything up. So what you do is before you copy your swarm over, rename the control layer to something unique like mantis control layer and uh, let the expressions update, and then you can select all the layers and copy them over. <laughs> to make the insects look like they belong in your shot, you'll probably have to adjust their color or brightness. The best way to do that is to adjust these light layers. You'll want to position the sun layer so that it matches the light source in your footage. Um, you can adjust the intensity when you double click the layer. And if you just want to adjust the overall brightness of the insects, you can double click this ambient light layer and uh, you can change the intensity or the color. Also, definitely take advantage of these bonus audio effects in here. Uh, these were taken from various sources. They're all public domain. Um, I don't have a ton of sound effects in here, but these could be really useful. And one more tip, guys. I hate to be a pest, uh, but this one's important. I highly recommend you find some reference footage of your insect. Uh, you could look it up like on the web and then try to imitate their flight behavior and their speed. And it's going to look a lot more realistic then. Okay, I'm gonna talk about fireflies for a couple minutes now. Or where I grew up, we called them lightning bugs. And as I'm about to release this template, it's almost summer and the lightning bugs are just starting to come out. Uh, I'm not sure why they come out now. Maybe because it's swarm? Anyway, I have a feeling a lot of people will get this template for the fireflies. Um, the fireflies have that extra glow element to them. And if we look at the control layer, we can see we have this extra set of controls for customizing the glow. Each individual firefly has a glow effect on its first two layers. And we also have this adjustment layer, which adds some much needed extra glow to the fireflies. The adjustment layer is nice because it's a lot faster than adding two more glow effects to each individual firefly, which is what you would need to get the same results. But uh, the adjustment layer is not a perfect solution. It's more like the lesser of two weevils. Um, because if you put some background footage behind these fireflies, you'll probably see that your footage is brighter or even glowing. And that's because the adjustment layer affects all the layers under it. So what you can do is glow all the way to the bottom and hide your background and the sky layer. And now we have a transparent background. So you can put this entire comp into a new comp like this and then drag your background underneath here. Um, that method's not going to work very well if you have a 3D scene and you need individual fireflies to interact with the scene and move behind objects. So if that's your situation, you'll just have to turn off the adjustment layer so that your scene doesn't glow. Uh, you could always add an extra glow effect to the individual firefly layers if you need to, um, but that render time is gonna sting a bit. Also, if you see banding on your glow, which happens when you turn up the intensity, and it looks like ugly stripes in the gradient of the glow, uh, you can go to your project panel and increase the bits per channel here. 
to 16 or 32, and that'll take care of the banding. The last thing I want to mention about these fireflies are these glow on off controls. These values are in seconds and there's a minimum and maximum on time as well as a minimum and maximum off time. So the glowing of each firefly will turn on and off randomly within these parameters that you set. And the transition duration here lets you make the glow turn on and off instantly or gradually so that it eases in and out of a glow. All right, that does it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to check out the next tutorial to get some extra tips on animating and compositing your swarm. I'm going to buzz off now and, and start thinking about what crazy thing I can do next in After Effects. Don't forget, schools and flocks are available now. They're a lot like this template. Uh, you can go check them out at creationeffects.com. And there's a lot of other cool stuff for After Effects there, like 3D books, VHS effects, glitches, title effects, old film, growing flourishes, fire, auroras, networking effects, and over 40 artifacts so that you can convert your footage into animated artwork in any medium. Bzzz, <laughs>